for anybody that wants a copy of it.
pursuant to Indiana Code 35-44-1.1-2-1 that on or about a period of time from November the 9th, 2018 and August the 16th, 2023 in Clark County, State of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally through a pattern of racketeering activity acquire or maintain either directly or indirectly an interest in or control of property or enterprise contrary to the form of the statute in such case made and provided. Count two, theft as a level five felony. It would indicate that uh, pursuant to Indiana Code 35-44.1, uh, 2-1, that on or about May 3rd, 2021, in Washington, have it, Clark County, State of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally exert unauthorized control over the property of Utica Volunteer Firefighters Association, that being Utica, with the intent to deprive Utica of any part of the use or value of the property, said property having a value of at least $50,000, that being on May the 3rd, 2021, you traded a Utica owned 2020 Chevrolet Corvette uh, with a specific VIN number valued at $92,000 for a 2020 Mercedes-Benz S-Class 450 with a specific VIN number and registered said Mercedes in your own name. Count three, theft as a level five felony, pursuant to Indiana Code 35-43-4-2A would indicate that between January the 2nd 2019 and October the 10th, 2019, in Clark County, State of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally exert unauthorized control over the property of Utica Volunteer Firefighters Association, that being Utica, with the intent to deprive Utica of any part of its use or value of the property, said property having a value of at least $50,000, that being on January the 2nd, 2019, you traded a Utica owned 2017 Chevrolet 3500 <coughs> Silverado for a 2019 Challenger SRT Hellcat with a specific VIN number and titled said Hellcat in your own name on October the 10th, 20, 2019. You then personally sold said Hellcat for $83,000, 83716 dollars Count four, theft is a level six felony under Indiana Code 35-43-4-2A would indicate that between April the 30th, 2021 and September the 4th, 14th, 2022 in Clark County, State of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally exert unauthorized control <coughs> over the property of Utica Volunteer Firefighters Association with the intent to deprive Utica of any part of the use or value of the property, so that said property having a value of at least $750 and less than $50,000, that being on April the 30th, 2021, you traded a Utica owned vehicle in for a 2012 Porsche Pan Panamera, uh, with a specific cause number, and title said Porsche in your own name, that on September the 12th, 2022, you sold said Porsche for $32,000 to a car dealership and deposited said funds into your own personal account on September 14, 2022. Count five, theft as a level six felony would indicate that between December the 2nd, 2020 and September the 28th, 2022 in Clark County, state of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally exert unauthorized control over the property of Utica Volunteer Firefighters Association, Utica, with the intent to deprive Utica of any part of the use or value of the property, and property having a value of at least $750 and less than $50,000. That being, on December the 2nd, 2022, you traded a Utica-owned vehicle in for a 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air specific PIN number and title said Chevrolet in your own name on September the 27th, 2022, 
you sold said Cher Malay $39,500 to Kenny Eubanks and deposited said funds into your own personal bank account on September the 28th, 2022. Count six theft would indicate that between August the 31st, 2022 and September the 14th, 2022 in Clark County, state of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally exert unauthorized control over the property of Utica Volunteer Firefighters Association with the intent to deprive Utica of any part of the use or value of the property, said property having a value of at least $750 and less than $50,000. That being on August the 11th, 2022, you took a Utica owned Kubota HST tractor purchased in 27, 2017 for $40,600 and sold it to James Bishop for $31,000. On September the 14th, 2022, you deposited the check for $31,000 into your own personal bank account. Count 7, obstruction of justice as a level 6 felony, would indicate that on or about August the 16th, 2023, in Clark County, state of Indiana, you did knowingly or intentionally alter, damage, or remove any record, document, or thing with the intent to prevent it from being used, produced as evidence in any official proceeding or investigation. That being, you factory reset your phone upon the arrival of the Indiana State Police on your property. Count eight, ghost employment as a level six felony. It would indicate that between November the 9th, 2018 and December 31st, 2022, Clark County, State of Indiana, you, in your capacity as Clark County Sheriff, a public servant, did knowingly or intentionally assign to Michael Bowling, an employee under your supervision, duties that were not related to the operation of the governmental agency that you served, that being the Sheriff assigned Bowling duties on your personal property, rental properties, father-in-law's properties, pole barn, and property of Utica Fire Department. Count nine goes to employment as a level six felony would indicate that between November the 9th, 2018 to December 31st, 2022 in Clark County, State of Indiana, you in your capacity as Clark County Sheriff, a public servant, did knowingly or intentionally sign to Donald Jones, an employee under defendant's supervision, duties that were not related to the operation of the governmental agency that the, that you serve, that being sheriff assigned to Jones duties on your personal property, rental properties, father-in-law's property, whole barn, and property of the Utica Fire Department. Count 10, ghost employment, as a level six county, would indicate that between November the 9th, 2018, and December the 31st, 2022, in Clark County, State of Indiana, you, in your capacity as Clark County Sheriff and Public Servant, did knowingly or intentionally assign to Rodney Walker, an employee under your supervision, duties that were not related to the operation of the governmental agency that you serve, that being Sheriff, assigned Walker duties on your personal property, rental properties, father-in-law's property, pole barn, and the property of the unit fire department. Count 11 ghost employment as a level six company would indicate that between November the 9th, 2018 and December 31st, 2022 in Clark County, state of Indiana, you in your capacity as Clark County Sheriff, a public servant, did knowingly or intentionally assign to Brent Fisher, an employee under your supervision, duties that were not related to the operation of the governmental agency that you serve, that being a sheriff assigned Fisher duties on your personal property, rental properties, father-in-law's property, pole bar, and property of Utica Fire Department. Count 12, official misconduct as a level six felony would indicate that between November the 9th, 2018, and December the 31st, 2022, in Clark County, state of Indiana, you, a public servant, 
that being Sheriff of Clark County, knowingly or intentionally committed an offense in the performance of your official duties, that being ghost employment of Sheriff of Clark County, relating to Mike Bowling. Count 13, official misconduct as a level 6 felony. It would indicate that between November the 9th, 2018, and December the 31st, 2022, in Clark County, State of Indiana, you, a public servant, that being Sheriff of Clark County, knowingly or intentionally committed an offense in the performance of your official duties, that being ghost employment, as Sheriff of Clark County related to Donald Jones. Count 14, official misconduct as a level 6 felony, would indicate that between November the 9th, 2018, and December 31st, 2022, in Clark County, State of Indiana, you, a public servant, that being Sheriff of Clark County, knowingly or intentionally committed an offense in the performance of your official duties, that being ghost employment as Sheriff of Clark County relating to Rodney Wobbly. And count 15, official misconduct as a level 6 felony would indicate that between November the 9th, 2020, 2018, and December the 31st, 2022, in Clark County, State of Indiana, you, a public servant, that being Sheriff of Clark County, knowingly or intentionally committed an offense in the performance of your official duties, that being ghost employment as Sheriff of Clark County relating to Brent Fisher. Mr. Null, the first three counts are level five felonies, which have a range of imprisonment from one year to six years, with the advisory sentence being three years and up to a $10,000 fine. Counts four through 15 are all level six felonies, which have a range of imprisonment of no time in jail, if treated as a misdemeanor, to two and a half years at the Indiana Department of Corrections, with the advisory sentence being one year and up to a $10,000 fine. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand the potential penalties? Yes, Your Honor. The next question is usually do you intend to hire a lawyer? You obviously have counsel seated with you. I need to tell you you have a right to a speedy public trial by jury in this county. You have the right to face all witnesses against you, see your question and cross-examine those witnesses. You have the right to have witnesses brought into court to testify on your behalf. And at your request, the court will issue subpoenas requiring those individuals to come into court to testify on your behalf or to bring evidence in. You have the right to have the state prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to remain silent. You cannot be required to give any testimony or make any statements against yourself to anyone. You do have the right to be heard in your own defense at any hearing or trial concerning the charges against you. Anything you say, however, may be used against you. Do you have any questions concerning your rights? Okay. Now, by agreement of the parties, I'm going to enter a preliminary plea of not guilty for you and set this matter for a pretrial conference date on January the 8th at 1 p.m. At that time, we will also select an omnibus date. There will be a jury trial set for the May the 6th, 2024, starting at 9 a.m. Do you have any questions? We have none, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, the next issue is the uh, state of Indiana asked that you be held without bond, at least till the initial hearing. So I, I now want to take up the issue of, of bond. Mr. Hurdle. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. The, uh, the state would ask the court to consider, and I believe it is required that the court consider the factors set forth in 3533.84, the amount of bail, entry of order, endorsement on way of warrant in lieu of order, um, factors relevant to, non, to risk of non-appearance. Um, so the state would ask the, uh, the court to take a look at that. Uh, specifically, the, court, or the state points the court to subsection 7, the nature and the gravity of the offense and potential penalty faced. The defendant, as the court just read, is subject to 15 counts, 15 felonies, three of which are level five felonies, 12 of which are level six felonies. 
The state believes the gravity and the nature of the offense is significant here and would ask the court to consider those in determining his bail today. The state would also cite uh, a couple of things as risk of non-appearance. Uh, the defendant has a home in the uh, state of Florida. Uh, does the state have any evidence that he's going to flee or run to the state of Florida? No evidence of that, Your Honor, but I do believe it's important for the court to at least consider that there is a home there. The state would also point out that the defendant owns his own plane um, and has access to a plane that certainly allows him to come and, come and go outside the state of Indiana at his leisure. The state would also point out that the defense has filed a brief on the defendant's bond or recognizance conditions and outlined in that brief it does specifically say, in fact, he voluntarily availed himself of the court when he became aware that the Indiana State Police had potentially secured a warrant for his arrest. He traveled with his attorney, Larry O. Wilder, to the courthouse and waited in the circuit court, one, for multiple hours, presenting himself voluntarily at the lobby of the Clark County Jail. The state doesn't dispute that, Your Honor, but I think that only tells a snapshot of the story that happened yesterday because I agree with part of it. The state police were waiting for a warrant to drop after the charges were filed yesterday and in fact put, made contact with him in an attempt to basically locate him. They followed him for a period of time. Flea might be a, a strong term, but he certainly went to the state of Kentucky and attempted to elude them for a significant period of time, ultimately parking his vehicle on the street in Louisville, getting into a car with his attorney in Kentucky. Uh, so I, I think that adds a little bit of a difference and a different flavor than what the defense posed, that he's basically sitting in the courtroom here waiting and then turning himself into the lobby because earlier in the day, he's running from the Indiana State Police, bouncing around in a truck in Indiana and then to the state of Kentucky. So I think the state should consider that as well in determining his bail. Um, the state is not in possession of any IRAS. I know he was evaluated today. I believe the statute does require the court to consider the IRAS as well. I'll just give him one a little bit earlier. Okay, Mr. thank Turner. you. And I would ask the court to consider whatever that might be, Your <coughs> Honor. Um, further, the state would ask the court to consider if and when the defendant posts bond, that he be placed on some sort of monitoring device, whether that be a bracelet of some, some, some sort of in-home incarceration, work privileges, or something of that nature. And if the court is un, um, maybe not inclined to do that, then a day reporting of some sort to the probation department or court services here in Clark County or court services in a neighboring county because of the connections the defendant has here in Clark County. Um, and lastly, Your Honor, the state would ask the defendant uh, to turn over all of his weapons um, to the Indiana State Police so that they may be kept. Um, as subsection B points out, defendant poses, could pose a risk to the physical safety of another person or the community. Uh, the state is aware that pursuant to the search warrant that was executed in August of this year, on at least one of his properties, there were a multitude of weapons that were there. Uh, the state did not um, seize those weapons as there was not a warrant for those and that he was not illegally possessing those that the state is aware of. But in factoring bond, and once he does post bond, those weapons the state believes ought to be turned over to the Indiana State Police for uh, safekeeping as well. All that being said, Your Honor, the state would ask for a bond in the amount of twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, posted uh, by cash by the defendant. The state believes that is reasonable under these circumstances, and again, asking the court to review the um, factors set forth in Indiana Code, along with the IRAs and those that the state just laid out for the court today. Uh, Mr. Earl, you, you indicated there was a multitude of uh, firearms. One moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, they, uh, in talking to the detective who uh, is handling and overseeing this investigation, there were assault rifles, rifles, shotguns, and handguns as well, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge.
the state rests and there's an argument? Well, I suspect they'll want some rebuttal, but uh, oh, most for the time being, Mr. Judge. So first, Judge, we all know that bond issues require evidence, and as we know, what lawyers say is not evidence. I've seen no evidence. We call Chris Tinman to the stand, Judge. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under the penalties for perjury testimony about the gift being true, the whole truth, and not the truth? Yes, sir. I'll see. Thank you, Judge. For the record, tell me your name. Chris Tiffany, T I V N A N, and I'm with the Pretrial Services Probation. You can make some. So, in your professional address? Filing the case court out. Jefferson, no. Mr. Timmer, can you, I'm sorry, thanks, Judge. Can you, Mr. Timmer, can you tell the judge what your qualifications are that provided you with the ability to provide pretrial services in Clark County, Indiana? I've been with pretrial services for four years. I'm a Bachelor of Science in Sociology, uh, as well as uh, training uh, through the Indiana State Government. And that's training in pro providing? An for the Indiana Risk Assessment. So when we say IRS, we're saying Indiana Risk Assessment, correct? Mm -hmm. So to prepare your Indiana Risk Assessment in this matter, did you review the CCS chronological case on Yeah, we do a, a limited background check as well as conduct an interview with the defendant uh, to come up with the IRS score. And we agree that when you looked at the charges filed, uh, Mr. Dole is not charged with murder, correct? Yes. Nor is he charged with treason, right? Yes. Which are non bondable offenses in Indiana, right? The only way you can keep somebody in jail without bond in Indiana is they're charged with murder and treason, correct? And in fact, when you reviewed his criminal history, you uh, determined, or did you find that, that my client has ever been charged with a crime in Indiana? I did not locate any uh, involvements. There was one very old involvement that was abolished, but other than that, there was no... Traffic infraction. Right. So he has had a traffic infraction in his lifetime. And when you reviewed the information and got the evidence together to provide this information to the court, did you did you notice whether he was on probation or parole from any unrelated offense? He's not currently on any active supervision. So you're familiar with Indiana Trial Rule 26, correct? Which is what makes you have to do this, right? So in considering your recommendations or what the IRS says, the reasoning should be that no bond for arrest, or excuse me, for murder or treason, correct? Doesn't apply, right? right? No bond for someone who has pre-trial detention in other places or is on probation parole, correct? Yes. Doesn't apply. And that uh, you review whether or not that this new offense has something to do with any other old offense, correct? Yes, all those factors combine into the... And none of them apply to Mr. Noel, do they? He, he scored a low on our IRS. And how low can you go on an IRS and be the lowest you can be? That would be a zero. And what is Mr. Noel's score? He scored a zero on our IRS. So based upon what Indiana Supreme Court's adopted through this trial rule, which is evidence, right, that the finding is that he has a zero risk of flight, correct? He would be a low, he would be a low risk of flight. He scored a zero on the IRS. And with having scored a zero, we agree that the Indiana pretrial release rule says that he should be released on his own recognizance, correct? Yes, and I put him as a uh, level three on the supervision. And what's so level three supervision? So Judge Medlock understands, because he's right. from Washington County, we have different things here. What's a level three? I'm from the country. Yeah. That's not, that's not <laughs> correct, Judge Washington County. Yeah. Uh, level three is our lowest level of supervision. Which is what? Is one monthly contact with an officer in person. Now, you heard the, the government's argument through its special prosecutor as to what they recommended the detention be. Could you enlighten us all as to what he's asked for? What level would that be of supervision? Right now, currently, we don't uh, do any HIP, but that would be at least that would be level one, uh, which would be the most restrictive. And what and, and, and what is when somebody's on the most restrictive 
type of pretrial release, in your experience and based upon your time doing what you've done, what are the crimes that usually constitute that? Uh, it would more so be with any past uh, trial, pretrial FTAs, uh, or a risk of if they don't have a stable residence and things like that would be more so related to the amount of contact that we would like to have. So what he's asked for is the highest, which is for the most prominent criminal offense and criminals, correct? And what he grades is the lowest, which is zero. Yeah, he's and that's the evidence, he's right? Low. Yes. And that's the evidence. And you were aware that Mr. Noll and his lawyers waited until there was a warrant signed, correct? I'm not aware of that. Okay, then I have no further <laughs> questions, because okay. that would not be evidence, because you don't have personal yeah, knowledge. Yeah. Judge, I would move in the IRS as evidence as it relates to what bond should be, and we would just ask that the law set out, criminal the trial rule 26 be followed, and that our client be released on his own recognizance at the level of supervision that seems to be appropriate based upon the evidence presented by this witness who's qualified to testify. Any objections to the admission? No, Your Honor. No objection. I'll show you. Made it is. Defendant's Exhibit A? Yes, Your Honor. That's acceptable. Cross-examination, Mr. Herbal. Mr. Tidman, I guess maybe I don't fully understand, or maybe in Ripley County we uh, use the uh, IRS for something different. Is it your testimony that if someone scores a zero, they should be released on their own for cognizance each and every time, no matter what the charge? Uh, no, sir. I don't okay, that's what I got. Judge, can he answer? He wasn't finished. He asked a question. Can he answer? Is that an objection? It is an objection. He cut the witness off and he wasn't finished answering. Response, Mr. Earl? I'll throw the question. Thank you. Again, Your Honor. you so all, all due respect, I'll, I'll repeat the question, Mr. Tidman. Is it your testimony today that if someone scores a zero on the IRAS, the court should just release them on their own recognizance. Uh, no, sir. That that decision is up to the judge. I can only simply make an IRAS recommendation and a supervision level recommendation. Okay. And so you're not saying bond should be a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. You're talking about once bond potentially is posted, what the what the supervision level you're uh, at least recommending. Through our pretrial services program, you could be released on your own recognizance to pretrial. You could have a bond and then report to pretrial as well. Okay. Now, um, who employs pretrial services in Clark County? It would be the Clark County government. Okay. So who do you report to? Who do I report yes. to? The chief probation officer and then the judges. Okay. Do you work with the sheriff's department at all? Uh, Directly in the mornings, uh, they get together our defendants for interviews in the morning. But as far as like a face-to-face, -face, not not daily. But we do communicate with the jail every day to get our defendants for interviews. So they provide you information and access to their inmates. They provide us the ability to talk to the inmates for the CR 26 interviews. Okay. And uh, you said you've been employed for four years. Yes, sir. And during those four years, um, was the defendant um, the Clark County Sheriff at that time? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so you had received permission at least at some point in time from him or his employees to access those same different defendants for the IRS, is that right? I've never uh, personally communicated with Mr. Noel, uh, to my knowledge, but I do communicate with his staff uh, through the jail, through the interviews. And obviously, just like the staff now reports to Sheriff Maples, at one point in time, that staff reported to then Sheriff Knoll. Do you feel comfortable um, supervising uh, somebody like Mr. Knoll? Um, I don't want to object to the characterization of the question. Somebody like Mr. Knoll? Are we talking about somebody that scores a zero on the IRS? What are we trying to imply? Is somebody like Mr. Knoll? State the objection, Mr. I object to the characterization of, the, of the, the question. It implies something that is nefarious as it relates to my client. There's no evidence. There's still no evidence from the state of anything. Response, Mr. Earl? 
Your Honor. It was uh, no attempt to be nefarious. Uh, it was an attempt, basically, to ask him if he felt comfortable supervising the ex-sheriff in Clark County. Overruled you, man. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I, I I understand what you're asking. I don't personally I do supervise. Too. I, think Mr. Wilder I too. just I do the assessments. Um, so in terms of me personally supervising him, I wouldn't be in that role. Um, but I, I understand what you're asking, and I wouldn't really have an opinion on that one way or another. If I was asked to do something, that's what I'm asked to do. So that might be a question for one of your superiors, the chief probation officer, or someone else, how they would feel about supervising someone like Jamie Noll. That would that would be a question for the chief probation officer on how they would like to handle uh, a former employee of the Clark County uh, government branch being supervised. Above your pay grade. Yeah, if you want to phrase it like that. Sure. Do you know the defendant? Uh, just as the sheriff, but not personally. Do you have any personal knowledge of any of the accusations made in the criminal um, information against the defendant? Just what I did on a report from copying the charges over. Have you always been in pretrial services here? Yes, sir. You live in Clark County? Yes, sir. Was any of this a surprise to you? Judge all check. Relevance. Thank you, Judge. Judge, I don't believe I have any other questions at this time. Mr. Just Wilder. one, Judge. Was there anything that Mr. Hurdle asked you that caused those findings on that piece of paper to change? Uh, no, sir. What I put on the, the paper is, is what he scored. Thank you. No question. Uh, the court has a question. Yes, sir. How do I, how do I, besides this one, how do you pronounce your last name? Tibna. Tibna? Yep. Mr. Tibna, how many times have you done a pretrial assessment on a past public official and a, and a current you know, public figure uh, that has an airplane and that allegedly has uh, a lot of other people's money and government? Taxpayer. Um, this would be a unique situation. Be a unique situation. Okay. That prompts any questions from either side. Not from the state, Your Honor. I am no judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stepping in. Any other witnesses, Mr. Bowman? Uh, Your Honor, at this time we've provided all the evidence that's necessary, we believe, to support our argument. Mr. Walker, well, I have not had, I was given your brief just moments before I came out here. Uh, would you like to summarize it for me? Your Honor, there's really no need to summarize the brief because what really matters is the government provided zero evidence. Lawyers' words are not evidence. Statements that Mr. Hurdle made are not evidence. We do evidence-based bonds now. The trial rule is clear. The statutes are clear. The only evidence before the court today is what we heard from the gentleman who's trained to make that determination as to what his IRS is. The only thing we follow based upon that is what the Supreme Court of Indiana has told us we follow. Trial Rule 26, he is not charged with murder, he is not charged with treason, he was not on pre-trial -re -pre release for an unrelated matter, he has never been arrested, and he is not on probation or, or parole or under a community supervision program. The Supreme Court states that the IRS indicates that he is not a risk of flight, therefore we ask the court to place him on level three supervision and that he be released today on his recognizance. Your Honor, the, uh, the state would rest on its uh, prior evidence that was uh, placed before the court in the, um, my first round. Um, and uh, I think probably to clear up the record, the, the state has um, no issue with Mr. Tidman and, and pretrial services in Clark County. Um, I think the state is trying to be cognizant, as the court is, of potentially supervising an ex-sheriff, a public figure, um, someone like Mr. Knoll, um, 
no nefarity noted there either. But um, I, I, if, if Clark County is in a position that they want to supervise, and if the court feels that ultimately after bail is posted, the pretrial services in this county are most appropriate, um, then by all means do it. But I, I think that um, there certainly could be some at least perceived conflicts. Hence, that's why the Indiana State Police is investigating this. Hence, why there's a special prosecutor involved. Hence, why there's a special judge involved because Clark County has removed itself from that equation. So that's the only intent that the state was doing that. Nothing personal or um, untoward with, uh, with Mr. Tidman. So the state would ask the court to consider that in any determination it makes today with respect to bail. Uh, I, I have no concern with Mr. Tidman um, in, in regards to his veracity or his honesty. Uh, I think that's a good assessment. Mr. Waller, did you want to say something? I, Judge, I was only going to once again state the only evidence in this hearing today is the testimony from Mr. Tinman and the document that was put into evidence. Nothing we say as lawyers is evidence. They presented no evidence. That is the burden they had to present evidence by preponderance of the evidence to ask you for anything more that he be released on his own recognizance. He does, but I think it was. Do they leave your passport? He does have a passport, and we will turn it in, Judge. I'm going to think about it at least a short time before I issue a ruling in regards to, to the bond. Um, I think there's at least one other issue that I need to address in a different cause number. Um, do we need to do something technically to address that? We can continue in this cause number, or in this recording. Yeah, All right. Cause number 10, C01-2307, MC 1423, that being in the matter of the investigation by the Indiana State Police. Uh, I was also handed this not too long ago, uh, there was a motion to unseal uh, the records in regards to the investigation. Uh, Mr. Wilder, do you We have no objection, Judge. We, we welcome the unsealing of all those documents for the public and for us to have an opportunity to read. All right, then I'll order that matter to be unsealed. So I expect the uh, clerk and the court will have a feeding frenzy from the media here in a short period of time. Uh, Mr. Hurdle, is there anything else that needs to be addressed today? Now for the state, Your Honor, is the, uh, the court's intent to, uh, to take a brief recess and make a decision, or are we going to adjourn for the day? I'm going I'm to take a brief recess. Um, I'm going to take a brief recess, and then I'll decide whether we're going to adjourn for the day. Thank so you. you'll stick around. Mr. Walker? And Judge, so long as our client remains here, and he's not transported back to Scott County, why would we wait for your determination that would be? Well, I'll, I'll decide that in a few minutes. Yes. Uh, and just for the public's knowledge, uh, I was assigned to the special investigation, and I signed, as I'm sure a lot of you folks know, the search warrants and subpoenas. Uh, because there was a new case filed, uh, the setting judge had, had to recuse himself, and I had to wait until uh, I received notice from the Supreme Court that I had been assigned to this particular case. Uh, that uh, notice came at about 10 to 4 yesterday afternoon, and thus I could not assume jurisdiction or take any action in regards to the issuance of the uh, arrest warrant until that occurred, and that's one reason uh, Mr. Wilder and uh, Mr. Noll uh, sat in the, uh, in the gallery here for a period of time, and uh, I assume if he had been arrested in Kentucky, he would have been probably a week before he could have been extradited, so it's probably good advice you give him to get back to Indiana, Mr. Wilder. Uh, we, we met at Mr. 
we met at Mr. McMahon's office to come to Indiana for the purpose of making sure we afforded ourselves to the jurisdiction of the great state of Indiana. Anything else, Mr. Horton? No, Your Honor. Mr. Wilder? Nothing, Judge. I'll be off record for a few minutes while I think about Thank what you, Judge. I need to do. To, to accept those either from the court to the state police or directly to the state police. I, uh, I believe that uh, 
either one is, is appropriate. If, if it's going to assure him uh, some peace of mind that something's not going to be damaged, the, the state probably would contend that there was nothing returned to him damaged, but uh, that's for another day, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Weller, I don't know that the court has the ability to inventory uh, the firearms. I don't even know how many firearms he has. Judge, could we allow the Jeffersonville Police Department to inventory the firearms, photograph the firearms, and then transfer them to the state police? I, I don't have jurisdiction over that. If the Jeffersonville Police would do that, Judge, is that sufficient? No. Here's what you may do. Yes, sir. When they're surrendered, have someone from your team uh, be there to monitor. If yes, you want to take photographs of them as they're, as they're surrendered to show the condition that they're in, I, that's fine. Yes, sir. You can do it one by one. But, uh, when can that be accomplished? And Mr. Dalton. Yes, sir. You keep one shotgun. One shotgun only. Try to deceive me. You will not like the consequences. Yes, Understand? Yes, Ron. Okay. And then, Judge, the issue of return of all other items seized, we can just take them in another hearing. Well, it wasn't set for today, so no, I, yeah, we'll deal with that at another time. I assume uh, now that everything's going to be unsealed, uh, there'll be a lot of new things brought before the court that yes, sir. we'll address in, in due time. Thank you, Judge. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Nothing else from us, Judge. Thank you. All right. We'll be off record. Thank you all. Alicia.